Hello everyone, today we're going to be modeling the motion of a skydiver as they jump out of a plane. Uh, so this is a practical example, and of course there's MG going downwards. And because this is a practical real-life example, we're not going to neglect air resistance. So there's going to be some drag force pushing upwards in the, in the positive y direction. Now we could use Newton's second law, and we can say that the sum of the forces, this is in the y direction, is going to be our drag force minus our gravitational force. And that's going to give our mass multiplied by our acceleration in the y direction. Now, force of drag can be actually calculated via one half times the density of the fluid you're falling through, times your drag coefficient, times your cross sectional area, and multiplied by the square of your initial velocity. So that's a lot to write. I'm just going to mention this as uh, as k from now on, so k times velocity squared. And we can say that the sum of the forces now is equal to k times v squared minus mg is equal to our mass times our acceleration. So notice, if we were in an introductory physics class, we can just, if we were neglecting air resistance, we can use a kinematic equation. We could just say that, um, y is equal to one half g times t squared. Now the problem with that is, is that our acceleration is not going to be g. It's gonna be something um, something different from g. It's gonna be changing because our velocity is changing. You can see that the acceleration is dependent upon velocity. If we look at the skydiver's motion over a small increment of time dt, which is very small, like a thousandth of a second, we can assume that that acceleration is going to be constant. And because of that, we're going to use a kinematic equation. We can say that the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times some increment of time dt. And this is literally just the acceler this is the definition of acceleration, change in velocity over change in time. And this dt, like I said, is going to be on the order of a thousandth of a mil a thousandth of a second. So yeah, it's definitely a good approximation. And we're going to find from this change in velocity, we can find the change in position. And it's literally just using a for loop. And, and uh, you'll see that in the MATLAB code. It gets kind of, it's very clear. OK, so now we can start with our MATLAB code. And our initial velocity in the y direction is uh, 0. So our first entry in our y velocity vector is going to be 0 meters per second. And our initial uh, position we're going to say is a thousand meters above the ground. Uh, I don't know if that's correct. I don't know how I know I don't skydive personally, but uh, just substitute in a value that's appropriate for whatever you're using. Uh, we're going to define g as the acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. Um, now, our increment in time, I said we're going to use as a thousandth of a second or a millisecond. And our final time, we're going to analyze this for, let's say, you know what? Let's analyze this for 30 seconds. Uh, and our time vector is going to go from 0 seconds, get incremented by dt, and terminate at t. Uh, and then our, remember our k value from before? I said that k is equal to 1 half times the density of air times our, our drag coefficient. In this case, for a skydiver going spread eagle and falling on their belly, is about 0.7. And the cross-sectional area of a skydiver going spread eagle is about 0.45 meters squared. And let's say the mass of the skydiver is, I don't know, 60 kilograms. So now we can begin our iteration scheme. And for ii equals, oh, sorry, that's ii, equals uh, 2 to the length of t. And I want to go to the length of t because I want every value to be, uh, every value within our time vector to be, um, to be used, and we can continue our net force. This was literally derived from our free body diagram. K times our initial velocity squared uh, minus mass times the acceleration of gravity minus mg. Okay, so yeah, if that makes if that doesn't make any sense, just go back and watch our watch how I derived that from our free body diagram. And our other equation that I mentioned was that the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity. Uh, plus our acceleration, and our acceleration is nothing more than just force divided by mass, times dt. And 
then our final position is equal to our initial position uh, plus our final velocity also multiplied by dt and that should be it let's just run this real quick and make sure I didn't make any silly mistakes okay that's great and we're also what's great is that we have the same size vectors over here the time vector is, has the same length as the velocity vector and the position vector so knowing that we can use the plot function and we're going to plot time on the x-axis and position on the y and I want to put these on the same graph so I'm going to say hold on and then plot velocity on the y-axis and time on the x-axis uh, so yeah let's let's see how this comes out now and there it is okay so looking at this I'm gonna say that the blue plot is is the position versus time because it's starting at a thousand and also notice how the slope starts off as um it's kind of on it's kind of changing a lot and then it maintains a constant slope it's relatively linear and the slope of a position versus time graph is velocity and so this is obviously the um this is represented by the skydiver hitting terminal velocity and we can see what that terminal velocity is by going over to the velocity graph and it's about 55 meters per second um now the next thing we could use this for is to guesstimate what the impact time is we see the impact time should be around 22 seconds just by going to the graph but let's do this in a better way let's let's use the intermediate value theorem if we were to go along this path and if one value is negative and its prior value is positive then we know there must have been a zero point between them so we're going to scan through every value by using a for loop and then saying if the uh the final position is negative and if the initial position is positive then the time vector evaluated at that index has to be the impact time. So let's uh, let's put that if statement in right now. So if the y position at the end of some interval is negative, and if the initial position y i i minus one is uh, oh sorry, if the yes you know no, I'm right is greater than zero, then I'm going to define the impact time. As the time vector evaluated at that index and you can see that right when I hit run you see the impact time is as I guess uh, around 22 around 22 seconds so that's a basic um, that's a basic application of the um, intermediate value theorem if you're taking a calculus class um, so yeah that, that's basically it for finding position and velocity of a skydiver after they jump out of a plane and also how to find the impact time using MATLAB. Uh, I hope this helps. Good luck with uh, everything in STEM, and uh, see you later.